Hi, I'm JB. Thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I'm looking forward to spending time with you going through the scriptures. And it is my sincere prayer that something that comes up during our time together, the Holy Spirit will use it to illuminate the truth of who God is in your life. The word of God contains so many precious promises that remain hidden from a lot of believers today because we're too busy to take the time to actually go through God's word. I want us to make a commitment here today just to be fully present, silence anything that might serve as a distraction so that we are able to give the word of God the respect and the reverence that is due. I just want to give you a little bit of my background information. I received my primary, middle school, and high school education in religious environments with the United Methodist Church and through the Catholic school system. I want to state up front that I have always, because I was in those environments, had an um, introduction or exposure, if you will, to theology classes. I appreciate learning the background of the Christian faith. I would eventually get to the point in young adulthood where theology was out here and I was here and I would need something to close that gap to bring me from the spiritual person that I called myself to the born again blood wash. The only way that we can really begin to identify with the higher thoughts and purposes in God's mind concerning who we are and who we were created to be is by taking the opportunity to really spend time in the word of God. So I gave you a little bit of background about my elementary and high school experiences. I eventually went on much later in life. I attended Liberty University online. It was during my time and my studies at Liberty University that I really began to get a broader perspective about what it is that I believed. And the reason that I entered seminary school to begin with is because I had an overflowing of thanksgiving in my heart and in my life for Jesus Christ. It was like the Lord came alongside me and walked me through some very difficult seasons very difficult um, situations. And when I was down to nothing, I realized that God truly was a friend who would stick closer than a brother. Once I stopped feeling sorry for myself and the situation that I found myself in, I really began to come alive because as I learned more about who God was, I also began to learn more about who I was. I had always considered myself a confident person, never really apologizing for the things that I did and said. I was confident according to the world standard. But when I began to view my life, my behavior and my choices through the lens of God's word, I realized that I had more work to do <laughs> than should be possible for one person to have to endure in one lifetime. Perhaps a little bit of that resonates with you. I just want to say that one thing that I have truly come to understand is that God is not waiting for us to receive a, a mark of perfection before we're able to come before him. Not at all. Because God's word declares that our righteousness is like filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. So I want you to understand that there is nothing that we can do that will create cleanliness in us enough to be worthy to really stand before God. Oh my goodness. But the good news of that is we don't have to worry about getting perfect or doing the right thing to be acceptable to God? Absolutely not. And the reason we don't live under that type of pressure 
is because atonement has already been made for our sins. John 3.16 tells us, and I'll use the NIV or the New International Version, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That scripture, chapter and verse, points to the Savior. Have you ever reached a point in your life where you were just sick and tired of being sick and tired? I know for a fact that I have. I've alluded to that earlier. I shared a little bit about that earlier. But you can eventually, prayerfully, get to the point where you get tired of doing the same old thing, having the same old experiences, feeling empty, worn, used. You might even feel like you're friendless without a single person in the world that you can call on to share your sorrow. I know it seems odd that I say it prayerfully, but the reason that I say it prayerfully is because Sometimes God has to take us down to nothing to get us to a place of humility where we're flat on our backs. We can do nothing in any way to help change or improve our situation. In these moments, things have gotten so bad that the only place we can look is up and begin a dialogue with God about what it's going to take to start living a life that is filled with purpose and meaning and love. And I can't forget peace. All of these things become a byproduct of you being tired, of being sick and tired and calling out to God for help. You have to understand that God is a gentleman caller. He will not force his way into your life. He will not beat you over your head and club you into submission. That's not how it works. God has already given us a sacrifice, complete and total sacrifice that has taken away every sin that we have ever committed or will ever commit. God did that so that when we got to our lowest and most broke, would have a way to get from nothingness to somethingness in him. And that's Jesus. He'll knock softly on the door of your heart. And I would urge you to accept his invitation. And by accepting, I mean you just simply have to repent of your sins, ask for forgiveness, and then invite Jesus into your heart to be the Lord of your life. Just that easy, just that quick, you have been adopted into the family of believers and you have secured your eternal destination. My pastor says, especially for people who may not be believers yet or people who hear the Lord knocking ever so gently on the door of their heart, and they're kind of getting to that restless place within their spirit where their spirit is calling out for more, wanting to go to higher and higher heights. It's not good people that go to heaven, he says, and bad people that go to hell, but it's forgiven people who end up in heaven. Even after we make the confession of faith, that's you inviting the Lord into your life and repenting of your sins, you're still going to make mistakes you're going to have some up days and then you'll have some down days. But you will also have the comfort of knowing that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are never more than a prayer away. Spend time in the scripture so that you get to know the word of God for yourself. Because when God's word gets on the inside of us, it can get sifted by our spirit that slowly over time we'll find that we think differently, we speak differently, 
and we act differently. I can tell you with confidence that if you would just try him, you will find yourself wanting more and more and more because defaults are set now for love and for peace. I in particular was somebody who didn't mind strife. I didn't mind chaos. I could function fairly well in both sets of conditions and never miss a beat. My tongue was sharp. My speech was vile. And the Lord convicted me by showing me in his word that out of an overabundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I can't even begin to tell you how devastated I began to be once I really got to um, understand who I was in Christ. And I would look back on things that I had said to people and things that I had done. And I can't even describe the sorrow that filled me because I became ashamed and embarrassed about things that came out of this mouth. Because of his kindness, because of his graciousness and because of his mercy, I could come before him and I could ask for forgiveness and know that it had been received. And that's just the beginning of the work. Relationship with God will call you higher and higher. There is no way that you can truly invite God into your life as Lord and Savior and remain the same. There is no way that you can invite him into your life and you remain the same. Not possible. Because God's ways are higher than our ways and God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So if he is calling to the deep within you, the deep within you is going to help you rise to levels that you didn't know were possible before you came into fellowship or reconnection with God. I want you to know that salvation is free. Jesus has paid it all. We owe everything to him. It is simply our relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior, that creates an opening whereby we can even approach God in prayer. I'll close with this so that you understand that you don't have to do anything to obtain salvation. It's a verse out of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. This word of God shows us that there is nothing that we can do to earn or obtain salvation. It reads, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Spend some time with God in prayer this week and ask him to meet you at his word. I thank you again, sincerely, for spending some time with me here today. I hope you'll come back here again. Feel free to interact with me in the comment section. If you know someone in need of encouragement, please recommend this channel to them. I pray that you're blessed so that you're able to be a blessing.